Hi students, welcome to Year 11 Biology and Cells as the Basis of Life. This is video number eight and we've just moved now from looking at cell structure and we're going to be moving into cell function. So in this next series of videos what we're going to be doing is focusing on some of the key functions that cells carry out and also some of the very important processes that are associated with those functions. And the first of those is diffusion. So let's have a look. So what you're asked to do is to investigate the way in which materials can move into and out of cells, including, but not limited to, conducting a practical investigation modeling diffusion. So one of the things that you'll need to do in class is to carry out a practical activity that demonstrates diffusion. So let's briefly look at the concept of diffusion now. Diffusion is simply the movement of particles, molecules, atoms, ions, from areas of high concentration to areas of low concentration. This is a passive process. And that means that the cell doesn't have to waste energy getting diffusion to occur. It happens naturally. The important thing about diffusion is that we have now looked at the structure of the cell membrane and we know that it is a semi-permeable membrane. That is, it allows some particles to pass through it, but not others. And that means that where the particles are small enough to actually pass through the membrane, all that we need is a, a differential or a gradient. If there is a gradient, that is an area where the particles are in a higher concentration than elsewhere, for example, in the extracellular spaces outside the cell uh, compared to the intracellular spaces uh, within the cell, then you just get this net movement um, from the area of high concentration through the membrane to the area of low concentration. Now, the process may not look quite as simple as the way that I've represented it, but that's what diffusion is. Diffusion is, uh, I guess, the simplest way to think about that is what happens if a gas tap is leaking in the science laboratory. Wherever it is leaking, it will build up a high concentration around that particular um, leak. But the gas will naturally move away from that source of high concentration of gas throughout the rest of the room. So eventually, the gas will fill the room. And you will detect that gas um, more quickly if you're sitting closer to it. This is the process of diffusion. Diffusion happens with ions in solution. It happens with gases moving through other gases. And it also happens with some very important uh, molecules, particles, ions, um, that move into and out of cells. There's three important factors that affect the rate of diffusion. And they are the concentration of the particular substance that we're looking at, that is diffusing, the temperature of the system, and also the pressure. And of course, pressure is going to be more relevant usually for gases than it will be for uh, solutions. But nevertheless, uh, pressure is a very important factor that affects the rate of diffusion. And it's easy to remember the effect that each of these has because they're all direct relationships. And direct relationships mean that if we increase the temperature, then we increase the rate of diffusion. And that occurs for concentration of the uh, diffusing particles as well as it does for the pressure of the diffusing gases. So an example of this would be what happens in the lungs. So we draw air into our lungs. The, the air goes through uh, into the bronchioles and eventually into these little sort of grape-like sacs called alveoli. Now the alve alveoli are sitting right next to the blood system, the capillaries in particular. And so there's only a thin membrane that separates the alveoli from the capillary. And what that means is that where certain substances are in high concentration on one side of this um, barrier, they will migrate across to the side where they're in a lower concentration. So you can expect that blood that's being passed through the lungs is going to be quite low in oxygen but the air that you breathe into your lungs is going to be high in oxygen. So we get a net flow of oxygen from the lungs 
into the capillaries, into the blood system. Carbon dioxide, on the other hand, goes the other way. The concentration of carbon dioxide is high in the blood, much lower in the alveoli. So the net movement, uh, according to diffusion, is going to be from the blood system into the lungs. This uh, introduces another very important concept, which we'll get to in the next uh, couple of videos, around the influence of surface area and volume. And one thing that happens in the lungs is these alveoli um, massively increase the surface area over which this exchange occurs, which makes it far more efficient. And that is a, a common theme that we look at when we're uh, examining the ratio of surface area and volume for um, different uh, biological systems. So this is just a quick introduction to diffusion, uh, to an understanding of what diffusion is and some of the things that affect the rate of diffusion. Thanks for watching.